Welcome, if you're joining us for the first time, or welcome back to Newcastle Family History Society podcasts. The Newcastle Family History Society, located on a Wabakal land in Newcastle, New South Wales, Australia, provides support for those interested in family history. In this episode of Felonious Females, Mel Woodford outlines the formation and purpose of the AA Company, celebrating 200 years of operation in 2024, and the part it played in the history of conflict women that came to Newcastle and the Hunter. Through the use of AI technology, listen to their stories. In 1819, Commissioner Big was tasked with preparing three reports for the British Parliament on the administration and state of the colony of New South Wales, the future of convict transportation and the likely economic opportunities in New South Wales. Part of Big's report recommended that large land grants be given to men with a good deal of capital behind them and that convict labour be used to work the land. Thus, the Australian Agricultural Company was formed in 1824 by an Act of British Parliament and a Royal Charter for the cultivation and improvement of wastelands in New South Wales, including the production of fine merino wool for export to Britain. Around 400 investors funded the company, including eight members of the MacArthur family, 27 members of the House of Commons, directors of the Bank of England, wealthy merchants and politicians, and it was decided that the land grant would total one million acres. Robert Dawson, the company's chief agent, sailed from England with company officers and employees, along with livestock, arriving in November 1825. Land was selected around the Port Stephens area, and it was not long before a settlement began to develop, bringing with its schools, churches and other facilities which accompanied the growth in population. The township was named Carrington, not to be confused with the Newcastle suburb of the same name. It was not long, however, before it was acknowledged that this area was not ideal for sheep. A portion of the grant was exchanged for some more suitable land on the Liverpool Plains west of Willow Tree and the Peel River south of Tamworth. Dawson soon began work on the construction of Tarlee, a fine home for the successive superintendents of the AA company, and initially also the company's headquarters. To begin with, Dawson headed the company until replaced by James Ebsworth and John MacArthur in an acting capacity from 1828 to 1830. Sir Edward Parry became the next commissioner from 1830 to 34, followed by Henry Dumarek, 1834 to 38, and, after another interim term by James Ebsworth, Captain Philip Parker King, son of Governor King, took over from 1839 until 1849 and was the last commissioner to live at Tarley House. The AA Company relocated its headquarters to Stroud in the mid-1800s. In 1830, the AA Company also took over the handling of the coal mining industry in Newcastle from the government. Initially, convict labour was used until coal miners were brought out from Britain in the 1840s. Those interested in further information on the beginnings of the AA Company might find local historian and author Julie Keating's presentation on our Newcastle Family History Society YouTube channel of interest. For many years, convict labour was the mainstay of the AA Company. 
Due to the nature of the work, the vast majority of it was done by assigned male convicts. Female convicts were assigned as domestic servants to the free folk who worked for the company. In 2004, a 200 page book was published by the Port Stephens Family History Society, detailing the convicts who worked for the AA company from 1825 until 1850. This publication gives an excellent biographical index of those people, many of whom continued to work for the company after they were free. Some also settled in the areas where the AA company had land grants and became pioneers of those districts. Amongst the list of male convicts, we find a number of female convicts who were assigned to the company or to specific individuals who worked for the company. It is with these women that we are concerned. Some of them spent only a short while in the Hunter Valley, while others made their homes here. Among the stories of these women, we find some heartwarming tales of kindness. Um, I'm Jane Craggs from Durham, and I arrived on board the Canes in 1831, having received a 14-year sentence for stealing. Um, I was married to Richard Beecher at home in England when he was convicted of theft in Newcastle upon Tyne in 1830 um, and sentenced to 14 years transportation. Um, he was assigned to the AA company straight from the ship, the Burrell. I arrived three, three months later and was assigned to William Ogilvy of Merton. I was 24 years old. Mr Ogilvy arranged with the AA company to swap another convict for Richard so I could be with my dear husband. This was a true act of kindness. My Richard uh, went on to become a harbour pilot in Newcastle and was described in the post office directory of 1872 as a master mariner living in Tyrrell Street, Newcastle. Jane would have been so proud of him, but sadly she had died in 1854 and was buried in the grounds of Christchurch Cathedral, where Richard was laid to rest beside her 22 years later. My name is Mary Thompson and I was 23 years old when I was sent to New South Wales. I used to live in Shropshire, but was transported for seven years for stealing clothes. I came on the convict ship Harmony, arriving in September 1827. The next year, I was assigned to Mr George Milner Slade. Mr Slade had been the accountant and was now the storekeeper for the AA company in Port Stephens. I was very lucky because I was allowed to bring my five-month-old son, Noah, with me, which wasn't generally the rule. After a year, I met this lovely man who also worked for the AA company, Frederick Lehman. I called him Fred. We made an application to marry, but they refused us because I was already married back in England. I am Mary Ann Dunn from Dublin and I was convicted of stealing saddlery and transported to New South Wales on board the Andromeda II, which arrived in 1834. I was a 23 year old maid when I was sentenced to transportation for life. In 1837 I was assigned to Captain Philip King at Penrith. Two years later, Captain King became the commissioner of the AA company in Port Stephens and I went with the family in May of 1841. It was here that I met and married William Saunders. My William had arrived free aboard the currency lass in 1835. I got my ticket of leave in October 1842 to stay in the district of Port Stephens. There are also those who, sadly, continued to offend and whose names we find in jail records and dotted through the bench books. 
At 20 years of age, I was convicted of stealing money and clothing in Dublin and I was sentenced to seven years transportation. My name is Anne Fogarty and I arrived in New South Wales aboard the Edward in April 1829. Straight away, I was assigned to a doctor named John Stacy, who was the surgeon for the AA company in Port Stephens. I was a general servant. Only four months later, I was convicted of robbing my master and returned to Sydney for four months jail time. I never returned to Newcastle after that. I'm Mary Gordon, a 30-year-old housemaid from County Sligo in the west of Ireland. I was convicted of stealing and sentenced to seven years transportation to New South Wales. I arrived in the colony in December 1836 aboard the Pyramus. I had a husband and a young son back home. I'll never see them again. In September 1840, I was assigned to the Reverend uh, Cowper, who was chaplain of the AA company in a town called Stroud. I escaped as soon as I could, but they caught me and my name was printed in the Government Gazette. Eventually, in 1842, I was granted a ticket of leave for the district of Patrick's Plains, but um, I found myself back in Newcastle on trial for theft in June of 1844. I lived in Bristol, England, but got caught stealing a watch um, and the judge sentenced me to 14 years beyond the seas. My name is Anne Cale and I was 19 years of age then. I arrived on board the Diana in May 1833 with 99 other female convicts. In 1839, I was assigned to Mary Hoddle at Port Stephens as a housemaid. Mrs Hoddle was the mother-in-law of James White, the superintendent of cattle for the AA company. I absconded soon after I arrived there, but was caught not long afterwards. And my name appeared in the Government Gazette. Eventually, I earned my ticket of leave for the Patrick's Plains District, where I was to marry Francis Coughlin. Later, I married Patrick Simpson from the Maitland area. But during the 1860s, I spent some time in Maitland Jail. We also encounter women who died young. My name is Harriet Gilbert. I came to New South Wales as a 19-year-old nurse girl and bonnet maker from Leicester in England. I was given a life sentence for theft. In October 1828, I arrived aboard the ship Competitor and straight away I was assigned to William Barton. Mr Barton was an accountant for the AA company in Sydney. You will find my name in the 1828 census saying I'm a house servant employed by the company in Port Stephens. The next year, I married Samuel Collins at Christ Church in Newcastle, but I did not get my ticket of leave until 1837. It was cancelled the same year because I kept a disorderly house. I was given another ticket of leave in 1840. It said I had to stay in the Maitland area where I hoped to wed Peter Egan, but our application to marry was refused and I found myself in Newcastle jail for cohabiting. Once again, my ticket of leave was cancelled. Harriet was assigned to Mrs Smythe, who was the matron of the Parramatta female factory, but died soon afterwards at the young age of 35. I was 20 years old when I was convicted at the Old Bailey of stealing a show and was transported for 14 years on board the Earl of Liverpool, which arrived in the colony in April 1831. My name is Matilda Britton and my home was in Sunderland, England. 
And next year I was assigned to Mrs. Am Stubbs as a nurse, maid and washerwoman. Mrs. Stubbs was the wife of the AA company storekeeper in Port Stevens. I didn't stay very long in the area though. By December 1832 I was in Bathurst and assigned to three different people. I absconded from Captain Steele. In 1836 I married John de Cloé. They were married almost 17 years when Matilda died at the age of only 41. Two names which come to our attention as having applied for a number of female convicts to be assigned to them were the AA Company surgeon, Dr John Stacey, and the Reverend Cowper, chaplain of the AA Company in Port Stephens and later Stroud. Lydia Key is my name. Um, I'm from Suffolk. Uh, yeah, I was 33 years old when I was convicted at the Old Bailey and, uh, of uh, stealing clo clothing and household items. I was sentenced to seven years uh, transportation. I was a poor widow with two children and I worked hard as a needlewoman to support us all. I was loaded onto the ship Roslyn Castle along with um, many of the other 127 female convicts in the heart of winter in dreadful weather conditions. Some of the women from you, from the country had had travelled a long way on on the you know the uh, outside of coaches and were in a pitiable condition when they arrived. Poor souls. Surgeon Watt did his best for us throughout the journey and our ship arrived in Port Jackson at the end of June 1830. In 1833, I was assigned to Dr. Stacy, surgeon to the AA company in Port Stephens. It was here that I met my Henry, who had been assigned to the company in 1826 as a labourer. Eventually, we were given permission to marry and I wed Henry Williams in May 1834. I was granted my freedom four years later. Anne Fogarty mentioned earlier had also been assigned to Dr Stacy, as was Maria Newton, whose details we will mention shortly. Elizabeth Rutland, Diana Mason, Isabella Leach and Mary Gordon were all assigned to the Reverend Cowper at one time or another. I'm Elizabeth Rutland from London. Sometimes I gave my name as Maria Wakefield. I was a single girl of only 16 years when I was convicted of shoplifting and sent across the seas to New South Wales for 14 years. I arrived aboard the Sarah and Elizabeth in April of 1837 with 95 other women. Soon after, I was assigned to the Reverend Cap of the AA Company in Carrington, Port Stephens. Um, I found myself in the Newcastle Female Factory twice during 1838. So I was reassigned to and Mr. Werskin. The following year, I married James Cox from Clarence Town. He was a convict too. Elizabeth and James weren't married quite two years when she passed away at the very young age of 20. In Norfolk, England, I was a dressmaker by trade until I was convicted of stealing boots from a shop and transported on the Henry Wellesley, arriving in the colony of New South Wales in December 1837. I was 21 years old at the time and I could read and write. My name is Dinah Mason. I was assigned to the Reverend Kelper as soon as I arrived. The Reverend was the chaplain for the AA company in Port Stephens. I wasn't his servant for very long, though. I was sent back to the Newcastle Female Factory and reassigned to Major Crummer at the end of March 1838. In November of that same year, I married George Roll, a freed convict, and we went to live in Butterwick. Not all the female convicts assigned to the AA company 
had originally come to New South Wales. I am Maria Newton and I arrived in Van Diemen's Land aboard the Mary III in October 1831. I had been convicted at Kent Quarter Sessions and sentenced to 14 years transportation. I'd only been there two months when I accompanied my master, Captain McPherson of the 17th Regiment to New South Wales on board the Strathfield Sea. In July 1832, I was assigned as a cook and general servant to Dr. John Stacy, the surgeon of the AA Company in Port Stephens. The next year, I was given permission to marry John Holmes in Newcastle. John had arrived on the transport ship Fame in 1817. In 1839, after John died, I married William Shepherd, who'd arrived on the Asia. I got my ticket of leave in 1841 and I was allowed to accompany William to and from Sydney and the Williams River on board the cutter Elizabeth until I was free in 1847. I arrived aboard the Thomas Harrison um, in June 1836. And in Fermanagh, Ireland, I had worked as a needlewoman um, until I was convicted of stealing cloth when I was 22 years old. My brother was convicted at the same time, and, but I was sentenced to seven years transportation and he was not. My name is Isabella Leach. I was assigned to uh, John Bolton at um, his Patterson property called Tillenby and then to the Reverend Cowper. I met uh, Thomas Matum in 1840 while I was still working for the Reverend. Thomas was also assigned to the AA Company. We applied for permission to marry, which was granted in August that year. Over the next 10 years, we raised five children and moved to the Stroud area. The Maitham family remained in the Stroud district where their descendants can still be found today. Back home in Devon, England, I was a 40-year-old widow with two children when I was convicted of stealing a sack. My name is Anne Foster, and because it was not my first conviction, I was sentenced to seven years transportation across the seas. I arrived aboard the Roslyn Castle in late June 1830, the same ship as Lydia Key. In July of 1832, I was assigned to James Ebsworth of the AA Company, but I didn't stay long in the Port Stephens district. Three months later, I was assigned to a master in Parramatta and to a different master there two months after that. I spent time in the Parramatta female factory between assignments. Finally, I was free in January 1838. My name is Ellen Lewis, and I was a cook back home in England until I was convicted of larceny at York Bailey for stealing shoes and an apron. But the landlady, where I stayed that night, had loaned them to me because it was a wet night and I was soaked to the skin. At my trial on the 1st of December, 1831, the judge gave me seven years, although I tried to explain that I hadn't stolen these things. I was 30 years old when I was transported aboard the barrel which arrived at Port Jefferson in May 1832. My convict England described me as standing up, 4 feet 9 inches high with sandy coloured hair and hazel grey eyes. At first I was assigned to a master in Parramatta, but the next year I married William Chaplin in Narellan. In 1837 I was assigned to the AA Company in Port Stephens as a housemaid and cook. I'm Sarah Smith from County Clare in Ireland, where I was a cook and maid until I was arrested and convicted at Lancaster Quarter Sessions of stealing a watch. I had a 12-month 
conviction once before. So I was sentenced to seven years transportation to New South Wales. At 44 years of age, I left my family behind and was loaded aboard the Pyramus. In September of 1831, along with 146 other female convicts, we sailed from Woolwich, but strong winds saw the ship take shelter in Cork Harbour until we could set sail again. We arrived at Port Jackson in March of 1832. I was assigned to quite a few people during my first year. And then in my second year, I spent time in the Paramatta female factor as well as Port Macquarie. I was then assigned to Simon Kemp, who worked for the AA company in Newcastle. Mr. Kemp became a very well-known man and even became the mayor. He had a lot of convicts assigned to him. My name is Mariah Williams, but I also called myself Caroline Walton and Caroline Mason at different times. At home in Manchester, England, I was a dressmaker until I was convicted of stealing and sentenced to transportation for life. My voyage to New South Wales was aboard the Sovereign, which left from the Downs on the 23rd of April, 1829. There were 119 female convicts and 22 children on board. There were two of us called Mariah Williams, but we didn't look much alike. I was 19 with sandy coloured hair and the other Mariah was 30 and had black hair. She was also much shorter than me. There were two Mary Williamses on board as well. I met a man called Edward Walton in 1833, but our application to marry wasn't granted because I was already married back in England. Still, we stayed together. They even called him my husband on my ticket of leave when it was returned in July 1844. In 1837, I had been assigned to the AA company in Port Stephens, but I gave my name as Caroline Walton then. I was there a short while but was sent back to the Parramatta Female Factory in early 1841 for 12 months hard labour. That was when my first ticket of leave was taken away. They were difficult times for me. As the AA Company celebrates 200 years as an employer of Australian people, it is good to acknowledge the part it has played in the history of the country. In this podcast, we have identified some of those who first laboured to establish it, many of whom were assigned convicts, both male and female. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and perhaps were able to briefly step into the lives of the women featured. Our next episode will tell the story of one female convict who transitioned into a woman of high esteem in her community. Why not join us again on Newcastle Family History Society Podcasts. Listen for a moment, lads, and hear me tell the tale How o'er the seas from England's shore I was condemned